Welcome to Business Purpose and Clarity with Petri. I'm your host. We talk about startup life, insights, practical tips, mistakes, failures, and everything between. Crowdfunding. Should you be doing it? Is it the right way for you to raise funds? That's a really good question, and only you can answer that one. But I can try to give you some ideas. I have done uh, many crowdfunding uh, campaigns, helping companies, I mean, oftentimes raise them uh, either just a regular crowd project like Kickstarter type of things uh, where you're selling, pre-selling a product or selling a product and, and then also the, the crowd equity part where you're actually raising funds. And the char- characteristics of both of them are pretty much the same. Um, you have to do a lot of work beforehand. You have to plan the thing. You have to take care of the the boring stuff, the legal stuff. You have to take care of the obviously the story. Uh, what is it? What do you want to sell? How do you market it? How do you package it? How do you make it appealing? How do you make it fun? How do you communicate it? How do you plan to keep on communicating it over the period of the total fundraising then it's the objectives also that okay how much i'm planning to get money whether actual revenues or equity let's talk about uh, crowdfunding in the sense of equity from this point forward but a lot of the points more or less may actually work for the crowd sales as well the funding amount what is the minimum uh, that's what you need to figure out that, you know, if this, I don't hit this one, I don't do it. Then what is the maximum? Okay, this is the total amount I'm willing to take and I don't want to take more if if you're really lucky and, uh, you know, everything goes even uh, above your expectations. In case of uh, valuation, this is a really important point as well, because if you're putting a too low valuation, you're oversubscribed, then it's not fun to say no if you could actually raise more money, but, you know, you are diluting yourself too much. So you have to really keep that in mind as well. And on the other hand, um, if you're not really getting too much money, uh, what is the minimum that you can work with? Uh, That's something to to keep in mind. And and then there's also these marketing aspects on it that maybe you can uh, say that you already sort of hit the threshold, but you, you are willing to take a little bit more, you know, because it's going so well and, you know, it's so much in demand and maybe that's just a part of the marketing plan and uh, you're totally planning to do that beforehand already. Anyways, when should you do crowd equity? Well, I actually kind of like um, the crowd equity, the fundraising, in a way where there's no one or two big institutional investors, uh, where you need them to be on the same time and more or less in the same room and sign the documents and then the, the deal is done. Because it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of things need to be in place uh, in order for that to happen. It's in a way less work to start to get investors in uh, when you find them and take a smaller tickets. And uh, if the process is really smooth, you have done the paperwork, you have the things. So more or less like, hey, uh, well, just uh, this is the minimum amount. And if you want to put more, uh, just uh, sign in there, sign up and uh, send the money away and you're done. This they also gives the leverage for you because then there's no like one or two parties who can even collude and start to bargain and do the hard ball bargaining against you, trying to squeeze in terms you are not comfortable with or putting the valuation down or whatever the usual VC bargaining is. Obviously, you need to find some kind of lead investor, so uh, this doesn't go away. You need to do marketing yourself, so crowd equity, if you're doing it with some kind of platforms, they're not going to do the work for you. You need to be able to market. You need to be able to sell your case. You need to find the initial investors. So usually, you should have 30% of the total amount secured when you start to use these platforms. If If you're using because it's obviously also totally okay and you don't need to use any crowd equity platform. You can do it by yourself as well. It's uh, probably a little bit more complicated, um, requires a little bit more skill and planning to do it yourself, but you can, in most of the jurisdictions uh, I'm talking about now, EU, you can do it yourself as well. And that's, uh, I have also experience. We have done it that way as well. 
But anyways, so you need um, to do the marketing, initial marketing yourself. Uh, you need to prove the case. You need to validate uh, um, the valuation, your deal terms, and you need to have that lead investor, that, that one who is willing to state their name more or less that I'm behind this thing, I'm already putting my money in, and uh, I'm recommending others to do the same. And they have accepted the terms. So if you're using some crowd equity platform or you're do, doing the crowd equity thing, that's usually how do you also then can show that, hey, this person has already proved and they're totally okay with our terms. So you just uh, follow their lead and uh, don't bother with the details too much. So obviously do your own DD, but these are the terms and it's take, take it or leave it situation more or less. This is one way to do the crowd equity fundraising. So uh, you find the 30% of the investors and then you go public and you do your thing. Um, not going too much in details, how do you actually run it? But uh, that's basically the, the, the gist of it. Uh, 5 million is the amount you can raise uh, nowadays in EU per year. Uh, and uh, the law has changed. So if you're using some... Uh, accredited uh, approved licensed platforms you can raise from all the eu countries that's my understanding i'm not a lawyer so this is not legal advice but there's also other possibility let's say that you take some vc money you take some investor money but the evaluation is pretty good so actually you could take a little bit more money or you want to actually somehow allow other people to join you so if you have a really good B2C product and you have uh, loyal customers and you would like to reward them and uh, make them like ambassadors for your pro project, for your, for your product, for your company. This would allow them to invest small amounts of money without having too much of a workload for you and um, difficulties with uh, governing and, and uh, admin later on uh, because oftentimes the, the cap table doesn't take them in individually, but they are pulled in together as one entity, at least when, when you do it with the SVPs, these special um, purpose vehicles, uh, which a lot of the, or most of the crowd equity platforms are using. So this way you can take small amount of money, they can go into hundreds, maybe even thousands of people, and uh, then you can have... Uh, a nice way of reaching out, having tiny um, salespersons in a sense that, you know, they are probably not your employees. Well, they are definitely not your employees, but they are still waving your flag and uh, telling other people and, and doing referral sales, for example, for you if you have an additional referral campaign. But anyways, uh, digressing on the topic too much on these details, but the idea that you can engage with the people you already uh, know who are already in your contacts, but they're not the main investors, they're not dropping uh, tens or hundreds of case of investor monies, but they could uh, maybe put something in, in thousands or hundreds. And it's still uh, something you would love to get, uh, get them involved. And, and this is the way to do it. So even if you have like, let's say that you want to raise uh, 2 million, but you could take 3 million, you, you, you have the 2 million VCs already, maybe two investors, they uh, dropping in the 2 million together. And, and then you do the crowd equity funding uh, campaign as sort of a top up. And also like uh, for more fear of missing out type of way that, you know, if you were talking with the angel investors and they were like, you know, yeah, I don't know, you know, it looks good, but I don't know. And, and now when you have already raised the VCs, um, they are in, then you can go back and say, hey, well, you know, I just want to check out that whether you want to join because we are closing this round soon. And as you see, we're already having these big investors and we're getting, you know, we have already enough. So, you know, in case you want to just put a little bit of money in there and don't uh, miss out this opportunity, here's your chance, here's the link, just do it and uh, happy to take whatever you're willing to put in. So this is something you can do as well as a side or as a like a top up but not uh, the biggest priority obviously you also you can also use the crowd equity in a way that you just do the silent round and you don't want to have the big institutional investors and you just don't use any of that public aspect of it you it's, it's like a private round and you're just uh, knocking on doors and taking angels or whoever persons you think are suitable for your case and you just pull them together without having anything except the lead that's totally fine as well. And you can, in most of the cases, use these crowd equity platforms as well if you don't want to 
do the hassle yourself of collecting the money and doing all that paperwork yourself. So these are some of the aspects uh, of the crowdfunding. But um, I think the, the biggest things are like, is your product something which is easy to understand? Is your company something which, uh, you know, strangers would uh, find appealing? If you're doing something really hardcore P2P, boring processes for some really obscure field, maybe it's not the most appealing, maybe it's not uh, the, the easiest story to tell. So maybe one of them in those cases think twice, but if it's something really easy to understand for regular persons and you can make a nice story about it, uh, then crowd equity is, is obviously easier thing to do, but it's always up to you to whichever way to do it. But I, in a way I'm really positive about having uh, more investors than just a few investors, let's put it this way, uh, because I, I think that gives more leverage for the founders to focus on their company and uh, fulfilling their mission. But in some cases, you may want to have some bigger investors or you need them. So, so this can be also a complementary way of uh, raising funds. So uh, these are just uh, some quick comments and thoughts about uh, crowdfunding. I have been talking quite a lot about raising funds and doing it different ways and what you should and what should you not do and, and even how do you do continuous fundraising and different aspects and details of, of this whole process. So check out the other stuff as well, uh, which are available in YouTube and in my blog posts and uh, even this podcast and some other shape and form I've been doing over the years.